Hi. In this video, I will be simulating the sampling distribution for a sample mean for a small sample size, n equals 2, to, for a couple different reasons, to illustrate the idea of what a sampling distribu distribution is about, and also to start thinking about something called the central limit theorem. This also happens to be EHW3, electronic homework 3 from my stats course, and it is referring to exercise 5.63 in the current version of the textbook that we use. Here is the problem statement. I want to take this down piece by piece. Um, this first starts by referring to some pre previous exercises. You don't need to look back at those unless you happen to have the book, but we can describe those exercises as saying we examine something called a density curve for a uniform distribution ranging from 0 to 1. Uh, so these are numbers that are sampled from this distribution would sort of be evenly spread between 0 and 1 is the idea of the name uniform. Turns out the population mean for this distribution is 0 0.5, halfway between 0 and 1, and the population variance is 1 12th, which means the population standard deviation would be the square root of 1 12th. Okay? Um, we can look into some more detail about what a uniform distribution is here in a couple ways. We can look at Wikipedia, first of all, and see, first of all, we have the graph of a uniform distribution for a continuous random variable between a and b. You can see this graph is non-zero when x is between a and b. It's zero when x is a, less than a, and it's zero when x is greater than b. And to be a density curve, a probability density function, the area under this graph must equal one. And you can see we've got these vertical lines that are not really part of the graph, but they help us see that we can think of the area under it as coming from a rectangle whose base is b minus a and whose height is one over b minus a. And if you multiply b minus a times 1 over b minus a, you're going to get 1 because the b minus a's will cancel. Okay, so that's what the graph looks like. We can also go down here further and see that the mean is halfway between a and b, as should make sense. That's the center, center of mass of the distribution. And the variance is this thing, b minus a squared over 12, which for the problem description here, a is 0 and b is 1, that's going to be 1 minus 0 squared, which is 1 over 12. And then again, the square root of that is going to be the standard deviation. Um, we can also illustrate this with, in kind of a fun way, with this computer program you see here called Mathematica. I can enter this computer code and see some pretty cool output. Uh, I see then the graph of a uniform distribution, this horizontal line here. I see mu, its mean, at the center of mass, right at the middle there. I've picked a to be 3 and b to be 7. So the base is 7 minus 3 is 4, and the height is 1 fourth, which is 0.25. I've also marked the mean minus 2 standard deviations and the mean plus 2 standard deviations in green here. Uh, again, in this case, well, b minus a is 7 minus 3 is 4, 4 squared is 16, 16 over 12 would be 4, four thirds, square root of 4 thirds, which would be what the standard deviation is, a little bit bigger than 1. But what Mathematica allows me to do is to change a and b if I like, and I can see the mean and mu, mu, and then also mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma change. And the height of the rectangle changes as well to always make the area under it equal to 1. So it really truly is a density curve, uh, truly a probability density function. All right, let's go back now to the problem statement. So what's the, what are the other directions here? We're going to simulate taking samples of size 2 from this distribution, and now we're going to use a spreadsheet, use RAND, the RAND function, in Excel or something similar, I'm using Google Sheets, to generate 100 samples from this distribution. I'd prefer saying 100 sample points. This is actually going to represent one sample, and put those in the first column. Then generate another 100 sample points from this distribution and put those in the second column. The third thing we're going to do the most important thing really is calculate the mean for each one of those sample points for each of those columns. Calculate the mean across the first and the second row and put that in the third column. And then we would have 100 samples of the mean of two random variables. X bar, the mean, would be a sample statistic. It's going to have different values for different sample points. And by graphing those values of X bar, the sample mean, we will get an approximation to the sampling distribution, which is again a model of how x-bar varies from sample to sample. 
Actually, before I go on to parts A, B, and C here, here's another graph that I found on Wikipedia. Uh, this is an example of a sampling distribution for X bar. You can see it's centered on mu, the population mean. And the graph that you see here, not only this curve, but also these X bars you see are illustrating that the values of X bar that you get from different samples will be variable. They will vary close to mu, but they will have some variation to them. Okay, that is the idea of a sampling distribution. And this is also illustrating something called the central limit theorem. Turns out no matter what the population distribution looks like, whether it looks bimodal like this or uniform like what we're considering, if the sample size is large enough, the sampling distribution of the sample mean is going to look like a normal curve, also called a Gaussian. All right, let's come in back to this problem. Once we've done those three columns, we want to examine the distribution of the means. We want to make a graph, a histogram, and um, use graphical numerical summaries that you learned in chapter one for my students, meaning to describe the shape, center, and spread. And hopefully it'll be somewhat normal looking. That, that's the idea there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. Here's the details of the spreadsheet. So we use this equals rand function like this. Nothing goes inside the parentheses. What this does is, is it uses some spreadsheet capabilities to generate a randomly chosen decimal between 0 and 1. You enter it. In this case, I happen to get 0 0.70035664.1. You, in all likelihood, will get something different when you enter that first. Um, and that's the point, but it should be between 0 and 1. And the idea here is, that, again, the numbers that I get from this should be uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. Each small interval, say of length 0.1, has an equal chance of having the number be in that interval in, when I use this equals ran function. Now I can copy and paste this downward, click and drag the lower right corner, and I'm going to get more output from equals rand. Um, and in fact, the very first number I get here will change. That's the nature of how equals rand works in the spreadsheet here. And you can see these already are pretty uniformly distributed. Well, I guess these are pretty low here. That's just a coincidence. Uh, over the interval from 0 to 1. But I continue copying and pasting down. I get more sample points that are uniformly distributed. I'm not sure why this one has more decimal places. It probably won't for yours. We go down further, and we want to generate 100 sample points. So I go down until uh, I get to 100 there. The A column is referring to how many sample points I've got so far. You can see we get down to 100 there, and now I've got 100 sample points. And once again, once in a while, I've got more decimal places. I'm not sure what's going on there sometimes. We won't worry about it. All right, so that's sample number one, 100 sample points. And again, I, I think the book's description of calling that 100 samples is misleading. It's, it's really one sample. Uh, with a hundred sample points. Anyway, I can copy and paste that into the next column. Click and drag or copy and paste. I'm doing a copy and paste here to get a hundred more sample points for my second sample. Sample number two, copy, paste, there we go. These numbers changed. It doesn't matter that they change, okay? It doesn't matter that these numbers are changing. It doesn't matter if you get different numbers than somebody else says you will. It doesn't matter ultimately if your graph looks a little different than somebody else, which it will. Okay, It should look somewhat similar in the end is the idea. All right, now we're on to the most important column. We want to take the mean, which is average of the first two columns, B4 to C4. I can, in general, you want to put a colon. I guess here I could put a comma. It wouldn't matter. But colon will go over a range of these things. And this is what I want to do. So in D4 here, I'm taking the average of the two numbers B4 and C4. Now when I enter this, B4 and C4 are going to change. Okay, but the new number I get in D4 will be the average of the changed numbers. Okay, let's just check that. So 0.743 is the average of these two numbers, which if you go ahead and use your calculator, you will see that. Just add them up and divide by 2. I'll copy and paste this formula equals average downward. Um, again, the numbers will change. It's not a big deal. Click and drag this downward. So now we have a, a hundred values of x bar. Okay, hundred different values of x bar sample means for these uh, runs sample sizes of size two. Here's okay. Now we can think of it a different way. We can think of this as a sample of size two, and this is the corresponding mean. This is another sample of size two, and here's the corresponding mean. Here's another sample of size two, and here's the corresponding mean. We are thinking of it differently now. Okay. 
one thing I want you to notice here is that the numbers over here in both of these columns vary a little bit more wildly. They are they have a better chance of being either close to zero or close to one. Like this number is close to zero. Uh, this number is fairly close to one. These numbers are less likely to be close to zero or one because the extremes, in a sense, are being averaged out. For example, this one is close to one, but that one's less than a half. You average those, you get 0.64. Not so close to one anymore. This one's close to zero, but this one's close to one. Those get averaged out, being close to 0.5. Not so close to either zero or one anymore. These numbers cluster closer to 0.5 than these numbers do. They're all between zero and one still, but they cluster closer to 0.5. So that's giving you a little hint that this, if I graph the histogram for these numbers to model the sampling distribution, we should see maybe something that looks a little bit more like a normal curve compared to a graph like this. Okay, That's the conceptual point we're trying to make here. So let's go ahead and make a graph now. Uh, we want to make a histogram. Um, and I guess if I highlight this first, then maybe it'll label the graph correctly. I'll go ahead and try that. So I'm using Google Sheets here. This doesn't work so well in Excel. One defect of Excel, at least as far as, two th as 2018 here goes, is that it doesn't make histograms very easily without some add-ons. Um, but Google Sheets does. We can insert a chart. And this is not the chart you want. That's not a histogram. Okay, That's just showing the individual numbers that we got there. We want to customize this chart. We don't want a column chart. We want to go down further to a histogram. It is also a bar chart, but it's a better kind of bar chart, telling us more information here that we want to know. And there it is. And you can see already it kind of looks like a normal curve. Actually, it's something called a triangular distribution that goes straight up along a diagonal line and then straight down, but we won't get into that. It looks enough like a normal curve to say it looks somewhat like a normal curve. Did it label the graph? Okay, well, it labeled it there. I guess that, that's not really what I wanted here. Then we, we can do various things now to customize this. Um, I kind of like getting rid of that legend up there. So you could do a none there, then I got rid of it. You, you should label the axes. You should give the chart a title. Uh, something like uh, approximation to sampling distribution of sample mean for n equals 2. Okay, there, and you can make that smaller if you like to fit it better. Okay, you could also emphasize that it's coming, sampling from a uniform distribution. Uh, you should label the axes. Yeah, what about uh, horizontal axis? Um, something like, so those are the values of the uh, numbers that we got for x bar. And that, we could label it that way, values of sample mean x bar, and then we could do the vertical axis. Uh, this graph, you can see these numbers are actual counts. There were 21, it looks like, here, values of x bar in that third column that were between 0.44 and 0.53. You'd call it count of sample means, for example, would be one way you could do it. Okay? So try to make the graph look nice if you're one of my students. Um, you can do more things to make it look nicer, that kind of thing. This is an approximation to the sampling distribution. It looks somewhat normal. It's centered on close to 0.5, as it should be. It should make sense that it should be centered close to 0.5. And it has a smaller standard deviation than the uniform distribution did. The uniform distribution had a, a um, standard deviation of square root of 1 12th about 0.28, and by the way, notice when I entered that, this changed. That's okay. Okay, and yours is, again, going to look different, though it should be somewhat the same. It turns out this, the standard deviation of this thing is approximately a square root of 1 24th, it turns out. I won't explain why at the moment, uh, which is a little smaller. It should make sense that it's got less spread. I mean, we can see the spread uh, visually as well, and that's actually part part of what you should do for part A of the problem. You could see it's centered at 0.5, it's spread from close to 0 to close to 1, or you could say maybe the standard deviation is close to 0.25, you could try to guess it or so. You could also talk about a five number summary and talk about an interquartile range. There's various thing, kinds of things you can do to describe the center shape and spread of the distribution like they ask you to do there. And that's something you should type if you're one of my students in 
the uh, homework that you're doing here. Shape, approximately normal. Triangular, it's another word you could use. Centered, close to 0.5, and a spread from close to 0 to close to, to 1, but maybe you say the standard deviation is close to 0.2 or 0.25 or so. You're just looking at the graph. They say in Part B that the theoretical mean is the same as the population mean, which was 0.5. How close is it? Well, actually, we should probably do a calculation there. Uh, I can average these averages, actually. Let's see. This graph is on top of it, all those things there. That's not so nice. You're going to want to move the graph to a spot where I can see it more easily. Okay, anyway, you want to move it upward. Um, we want to average these averages, actually, to see if it's close to 0.5. I could do equals average. Uh, D4 through D, what would it be? I think it was uh, 105? No. Uh, 103 it should be. Close to 0.5. Okay. And I could do the standard deviation with equals STDEV, D4 through D103. Okay, close to 0.2. This number is close to 0.5, this number is close to 0.2. Just like they described theoretically, the theoretical mean is 0.5, and we're pretty close. And the theoretical standard deviation is the square root of 124th, like I mentioned a minute ago. And we could, that was close to 0.2. We can see how close our estimate is to that parameter value. Okay, so the uh, again the conceptual point here is what is a sampling distribution? It's a probability model for a sample statistic like a mean, and the histogram we made is a model of that, an approximation to the sampling distribution. It's centered at the population mean and has a smaller standard deviation than the original standard deviation for the population, and it looks somewhat normal when you have samples of size 2 or greater. Thanks for watching.